5 Reasons Why People Will Accept the Mark of the Beast God marks his people. God seals his people. And this is something that can be seen in Scripture. Revelation 7, 3 and 4, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. God seals all who trust in His Son as Savior by placing the Holy Spirit in them. This seal designates believers as belonging to God. Ephesians 1, 13 And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. All Satan does is attempt to imitate God, and we see him doing this again by introducing his own mark, the mark of the beast. The issue of the mark of the beast is a serious one that people need to take seriously. The issue of the mark of the beast is an issue of worship. It signifies who you worship and who you belong to. It signifies ownership. The issue of the mark of the beast signifies which kingdom you are forming permanent allegiance to. Essentially, those who accept this mark are identifying themselves with Satan and rejecting God for all of eternity. Revelation 14, 9 and 10 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Despite the warning of the angel of God against accepting the mark of the beast, Many people will still go ahead and accept the mark because of a number of reasons. In this sermon, we are going to look at the different reasons why people will accept the mark. Reason number one, refusing the mark will lead to financial ruin. Anyone refusing to take the mark will struggle to survive. Revelation 13, 16 and 17, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The Antichrist will be in such a place of prominence that he will have power over the world and all of its economic activity. Under the rule and leadership of the beast, his mark will be the only approved medium of financial transaction. That will put an enormous amount of strain on individuals. It will push people and urge them towards the mark, rather than them being able to make a free choice out of their own will. The beast will use coercion. That is something you need to know about the devil. The devil is in the business of coercion. If the devil can force you to do something, he will. God, on the other hand, allows a person to make a choice and then allows them to face the consequences of their choice. Even though people are aware that receiving the mark of the beast means eternal separation from God, they will still go ahead and take the mark. Imagine a father who has to provide for his family. How many people will be able to withstand the frustration of not being able to buy or sell? Enduring your family not being able to make ends meet is not an easy experience. Coercion When multitudes have danced to the tune of the Antichrist, many more people who are willing to stand against it will have their fate weakened. People will see those around them being able to provide for their loved ones and then look at themselves struggling because they are refusing to take the mark. That is a pressure that will reduce many people to comply to his mark. 
The second reason why people will take the mark is because of persecution. The Antichrist will possess the ability to monitor those who do not accept the mark of the beast. He will function like Nebuchadnezzar, who found out that there were three Hebrew men who refused to bow down to his graven image and cast them into the blazing furnace. The Antichrist will persecute anyone who chooses to stand for the truth. People who refuse to take his mark will be effectively cast out of society. It's going to be a world for only those who accept the mark of the beast, while others will have to face severe persecution. It is in the face of this persecution that many will renounce their faith. Those of us who live in a first world country like America, Canada, or the United Kingdom, and a lot of other nations, it has been relatively easy for us to be Christians in these countries for centuries, in comparison to other countries. There are countries where it will cost you your life for confessing Christ. But in this country we live in, we don't face that level of persecution. Yet some of us will deny Christ so that people will like us. Some of us will hide our faith so that we are liked. I know Christians who hide their faith in Jesus Christ only to be liked. Now think about how many more people hide or deny their faith when accepting and proclaiming their faith will result in real persecution. Now, the last three reasons why people will accept the mark is centered around deception. Satan is the deceiver. Many false prophets will come and go, but none of them will compare to the false prophet spoken in Revelation 16, 13, and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Right from Bible times, there has been a serious warning against the mystery of false prophets. Up till now, we still have several false prophets in the world. Many false prophets will come and go, but none of them can be compared with the false prophet spoken of in this passage. He is described to be some sort of religious leader who will point the world to the Antichrist, to love him and adore him. Every other false prophet seems to be the forerunner of the one who is to come. The coming prophet is the third person in the unholy trinity. He will promote the interest of Satan and the beast. He will be at the forefront to divert the hearts of people to worship the image of the beast. A demon spirit will come out of his mouth to gather the kings of the earth together against the Lord. No other prophet has this influence over the whole world. Reason number four, the false prophets. In Matthew 7:15. Jesus warned us against falling victim of false prophets with the following words, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. These false prophets are not the false prophets that are classified as being part of the unholy trinity. These false prophets are people who will urge people towards taking the mark. Reason number five. Deception. The Antichrist will come in peace at first. Revelation 19.20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Of course, we know that the greatest quality of false prophets is deception. The Antichrist in Revelation will come peacefully at first. He will perform several miracles and make people to believe in him because of his supernatural acts. The world will love him, adore him. He will be the solution the world needs. He will answer the world's problems. I cannot stress this point. The world will love him 
and we are told in the book of John that His Spirit is already on the earth. I have no doubt His Spirit is preparing the hearts of men. I have no doubt His Spirit is preparing the society to love Him when He comes. People have the perception that when the Antichrist comes, He will be a literal beast, like He is described in Revelation. But He won't be. He will be a man, a man who the world will love and worship. Some people will literally take the mark because they believe in Him, because He will literally exalt Himself as God. He will demand to be worshipped above all things. He will position Himself in the temple of God and declare Himself as God. 